think I was the same as well because I know last week, Patrick, we were kind of talking about Deli Ali and the fact that okay, he might have this productivity off the ball, but he's not really doing anything on the ball because he slows the game down. So, yeah. how happy were you with the sight lineup and more importantly, Deli Ali being dropped from the team? Essentially, yeah, it's a tough one because I've been riding for Deli Ali, and you know, literally on my podcast on views, they asked me when we got battered by Arsenal. The Arsenal boys were on to me about Deli. They said, like, "Are you still Deli in? Are you still this and that?" And I was like, "Listen." I might have to readjust or reevaluate my thinking on it because, yeah, he's working hard, he's bulked up, he's in the gym, he's putting in a lot of the hard graft, like Danny's saying, but the productivity is not there. Every time he gets on the ball, he slows things down, he's holding on to the ball for too long, he's not making the right decisions. And I know you can turn the ball over. I mean, like, look, if you look at yesterday, Sonny Kane and then Dombele were trying through balls at certain points, even Lucas Moura, they don't always pay off, but they're moving the ball. To, they're pushing forward. Delhi's not doing that anymore. He seems, every time he gets the ball, it seems to come back or it's unstuck. So, yeah. So, I mean, he didn't even get on the pitch yesterday. So, that goes to show how far down the totem pole, totem pole he's fallen. And if we're being fair to Nuno, De, uh, Nuno's trusted him in all the big games. He started against City. He started against Chelsea. He started against Arsenal. And he's done fuck all. So, mm. Yeah, maybe it's time for him to sit down. You've got Brian Gill fresh, ready to come in. The Celso is already uh, there as well, chomping at the bit. So there's other players that seem to be able to do a bit more. So to be fair, the lineup was spot on. Robson, is that right? I mean, yeah. he's a Deli Ali main source of our issues. I believe his mentality might bring the team down. Now, I want to just kind of flip this on his head because obviously over the summer, we saw him working tremendously hard. So Danny, do you think it's his mentality or do you just think he's just stepped off the gas really? Because he was high flying in that, obviously the summer break when he wasn't in the Euros. So I don't really know where to take from Deli Ali really. I think he's trying to do the right things for his physics, his physicality and his physique and his fitness. Like he obviously he's 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 bulked up a little bit in the summer and he's worked on his fitness a bit more. But at the end of the day, for to be a top level professional footballer, he needs to have like a combination of things. It's not just uh, the physicality and the physique and the fitness. He's got to have the ability, the mentality. He's got to have the concentration. The dr he's got to have the drive. All of these things that you you say you could see in Sonny, for example, right, or Hoybier. Yeah. Right, he doesn't have that, and he hasn't had a lot of those things for a number of years now. I mean, his first two seasons were unbelievable, but I think for him it was a bit of kind of like too much too soon, and like all the praise that the English media gave him, and all the hype, and all the kind of stuff like that. And then obviously the big contract comes in, and then it kind of all the endorsements and the personal stuff that comes outside of football, and then it, it kind of it, it, it's it's I don't think him and his people who people around him have could have controlled his lifestyle in a way where it can allow him to flourish in his professional football career. And I think that's where he's kind of, he's kind of been let down. He let himself down a bit and also people randomly let him down. And I think he's, his focus has turned away from the game and what he wants to achieve in the game rather than, and it's, it's more to do with like his personal life and stuff like that. And what I see in the games, it's like lack of concentration and it's like, it's like there's like there's no drive for him anymore. Like there's a drive to obviously he wants to be better physically and he thinks that will help him, which it will help him do more distance on the pitch. But if when you're not when you're not like you're you're misplacing passes, you're you're not you're not you're you're missing chances and stuff like that. It's kind of the same old stuff that he's been doing anyway for the last couple of years. So it's like it's, it's no different to what he's done. The only difference is he is a bit he looks a bit fitter. But other than that, there's nothing else that's changed. So. It's like it, for me. It's like I, I just think Deli Ali, and I've said this for a while now, over a year. I think he he's never going to find the form. I don't think we'll ever see that Deli Ali of old um, anywhere. Maybe if he goes to another club, but I just think regardless of that, he needs to go to a new environment. Whether that's a selling him or whether that's on loan, he needs to just get out of the club and go and play regular football at a different different club, different environment, and then we'll see what happens. And then we'll see if he re and in a position as well, like where I think we all know he's not the most creative player, but he's like a second striker, runs into the box, those kind of stuff. And I think he needs to play in a team where he's going to have that kind of role. And then we see what happens. And if he if he can find form again, then like kind of like what Lingard did, you set, take it, let, get, let him go on loan, get some sort of match, match time and experience and stuff like that in new environment and see what he does. And if he still doesn't do it, then you know that he's never going to do it. And if he does, then Daniel, Daniel Levy's got a win because then his value goes up and you can sell him for a better fee. So in a way, it's a win-win, really. So uh, for me, I'd rather send him on loan in January if we can. That's what I'd do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think Holly, can I, can I, oh, sorry, Holly, can I just interject quickly and say, uh, 
everything that Danny said is spot on. But I think unless we play him as a second striker, like Danny alluded to, we're not going to see the same Delhi. Yeah. When Delhi first burst onto the scene, he had um, Ericsson spraying yeah. passes yeah. and finding yeah. him. Yeah. He was running onto long balls, uh, basically supporting Kane. He had Moussa Dembele also creatively behind him, finding him. We don't have that same personnel anymore. So yeah. we can't afford to have Delhi floating around as a second striker. We don't have the team behind him. So unless he's going to play at a team that has that quality, you know, I, I just can't see him getting back into this team and providing because the guys, the positions that we want him in now, there's better players in those positions. So, you know, it's all well and good. Like Danny said, he's in terms of the mentality and everyone else, fantastic. But there's no productivity and yeah. he's not a deep lying midfielder. He's not a playmaker. He's not an interceptor. He's not a breaker upper. He's running around and putting a shift in, but we're not seeing anything else. So, yeah, I think you're right, Danny. Get him on loan. Let him play. I, I think like Everton... A team like that could be good for him. And then, um, do you know what, Patrick, as well? You're yeah. spot on with what you just said, right? About how he had Ericsson, Dembele and Wanyama, right? Exactly. Wanyama and Dembele swept up everything for yeah. anyone who made mistakes, regardless of Dele or not. And then you had Ericsson, who was the highest chance creator in the Premier League, like, exactly. until it was since even higher than uh, De Bruyne before he left. Yeah. Right? He was the highest. So when you've got someone who's creating so many chances... Then you're obviously going to have someone who can, Deli Ali, who can run into the box, score some goals. Yeah. And when you're playing in a team who's the lowest chance created, creation team in the league at the moment, I mean, it, it, it kind of speaks volumes, doesn't That's it? it. And, and Kane, Kane's role is reversed slightly as well. Kane at that mm. time was an out and out number nine centre forward. As Kane's dropping deep, that again is getting in the way of Delhi. So as things have changed, Delhi hasn't adapted his game. And that's why you kind of see him stuck. And he's yeah. almost out of sorts. He's not a 10. He's not an eight. He's not a nine. He's not a winger. When we put him on the wing, he can't beat a man. He's not got the pace to go past someone. He's not got the creativity to find someone. So he's kind of just, it's almost like a jack of all trades, but mm. he's not good at anything. So <laughs> it, it is a problem there. There is a problem problem no it is it, oh, sorry my voice is kind of funny but it is uh quite sad i mean the fact that obviously we, we saw a player of old that was you'd think had miles and miles Amazing. to see yeah, right? yeah. Just like, so it's like there's nothing else i mean like darren's kind of put a good point out saying sadly we don't know what's going on behind him and maybe he's mm. not good at dealing with change maybe him yeah. as a person can't deal with that change and maybe sometimes we do need to think that these football players are still human but it is a good it is a good point but then 